Hey y'all, it is Wednesday, July 5th. The time is 1841 New York local time. And in this video, I was doing some uh, contemplative, contemplative reflection today and uh, come to some conclusions that are very difficult for me. Um, so it is inescapable that uh, I am on the autism spectrum. Um, I have all of the symptoms, um, a lack of impulse control, uh, impulsiveness. I have severe uh, sensitivity to chaotic and loud noises. I am um, extremely bothered by screaming children, um, loud women, uh, loud men, banging, uh, loud, loud noises, chaotic noises bother me a great deal. Uh, I listen to the same songs over and over and over again. I have a deep attraction to uh, repeated sound patterns. Why am I saying all that? I uh, am pretty easily overstimulated and when I'm overstimulated, I start viewing things less objectively, and suboptimal, a suboptimal mind, mind state for uh, trading. You know, a lot of law firms would not want to hire me. Uh, because I would have a very difficult time with client intake. So I would not want, you would not want to have me as your client intake attorney because the clients are usually going to come in, especially if they're the injured party, and they're going to be very excited about whatever has bothered them, whatever has tra transpassed, having to explain to the clients that lawsuits take a long time that the process is not going to happen tomorrow, that trial is going to be potentially years down the road. Although I'm a deep believer in your Seventh Amendment right to a trial in a civil case, I believe that the system has eroded, systematically eroded, in the guise of judicial efficiency. We have eroded your Seventh Amendment constitutional right to a trial by jury in civil cases in which the amount of controversy is over $20. That is your Seventh Amendment constitutional right, and I believe that our current judicial system has systematically eroded your fundamental right. One of my natural inclinations is research. Um, I love researching the law. I love reading judicial opinions. I like delving into the nuance of cases. Um, there's a lot of important things in the dicta that are missed in your Quimby's and your legal, you know, whatever your summaries are. Um, although I'm a very polite person uh, on the exterior, on the interior, I really think that you're a fool. Um, it takes an immense amount of proof for me to accept that you are nothing more than an idiot. So, unfortunately, in our current, where a new associate attorney most likely fits in, personal injury scenario, civil suits, most of your new associates are going to be expected to do uh, client intake, and um, the clients bother me a great deal. I would much rather be researching the case law 
contemplating on the issues at hand. And unfortunately, um, new associates are often expected to do uh, client intake. And I would have a very difficult time doing that. But along with the drawbacks of how my mind works, there are advantages. When I am properly uh, hydrated, um, properly slept, properly rested, I can achieve a level of concentration and focus and single-minded determination that virtually no one you know can do. I don't say that to be arrogant. Uh, that is an accurate reflection. So going forward with this YouTube channel, I've been reviewing my own video recordings and come to realize that YouTube and social media uh, is always going to be geared towards shock jocks, uh, excitement, um, and unfortunately that is contrary to my natural inclinations. Um, my natural, unadultered, unexcited, unstimulated state is just contemplation. And unfortunately I don't think I'm ever going to be a big media star. Um, most people bother me. Most, most of what people do bother me a great deal. Um, I hate irrationality and illogic. Um, I cannot say, you know, one of the big new fads in our modern day and age is using singular they. Uh, you know, using they as a singular. And it bothers me, not because I'm particularly politically inclined, uh, just because uh, it, it's a grammatical singular. And one of the things when you are uh, in my condition, so to speak, is irrationality and illogic will, will just endlessly bother you. Uh, it will, you will never not be bothered by people saying things incorrectly, yourself saying, in th saying things incorrectly. And so unfortunately, I will not be politically correct, so to speak, on this channel. Um, I will be saying he or she not because I care about what you are. Um, I really don't care about anything you do. Um, it's just because it's incorrect. So that's that. Um, I don't think that I'm ever going to reach a very large YouTube audience um, because it's not going to be like uh, other day trading channels. It is not in my natural inclination and in my predisposed state to speak vulgar, vulgarly. Um, unfortunately, many of you are outside of the United States or you are not highly educated and you might have difficulty in understanding me. And that is not because I'm trying to, I'm purposely trying to do that to you. It is because that is just how I am. And so uh, I've never really been one to speak at a low diction. And I can't, and I, um, you know, attempting to trade will show you more about yourself in an undeniable and mathematically proven fashion, unlike anything else that you likely will do or attempt to do. So I can't deny what I am. The proof is mathematically proven in front of me. I can't deny that I'm never going to be a large social media influence because it is not what you're looking for. I am not a shock jock. I'm not Howard Stern, although sometimes I can sound like it. The reason why Vinny E. Mini bothers me so much is really less because I care about him. I really don't at all. Uh, it's because he is irrational in my opinion and doing irrational things in my opinion and that bothers me a great deal not because I care about who he is or anything like that I really don't um, a lot of people will misunderstand me and why things bother me it's really as simple as I hate chaos a lot 
I hate irrationality and I hate illogic uh, because it just bothers me. I hate loud noises. I love rhythmic noises, but I hate loud banging, screaming children. Uh, I really hate screaming a lot. I hate it a lot. I really do. I really hate screaming. Um, so, I want to get into a little bit of a topic in this video beyond just reflecting on myself and the understanding that I had to come to. If I'm ever going to reach my potential, I can't deny what I am. I want to talk about optimizing your brain state for day trading. You know, some of you are not going to take me as an authority on this as I have not made money day trading. And so don't really listen to me for the day trading. Understand that I'm very highly educated and when I need to focus on something, I can. So you can take that as my proof of authority. Um, an optimized brain state is a low cortisol, hydrated mind, low adrenaline, low cortisol, contemplative. That's an optimized brain state. So one of the things that I went out and did today is uh, I bought a bunch of uh, like not just water but like electrolyte stuff like Gatorades, rehydration because I know when I'm dehydrated that uh, my brain is not going to function as well as it's not going to be optimized. So I went out and purposely bought a bunch of uh, Gatorade, electrolytes, that sort of thing. Because I can feel when my brain is clouded. The other thing that I would recommend to you is, um, and I just like this again for how I am, is um, I like house music a lot, electronic music, um, relaxing beats, so to speak, uh, rhythmic but not like loud banging. You know, Michael, Inner Circle Trader, likes heavy metal, and when I'm in the mood, uh, when I'm very agitated or um, stimulated, I like uh, I like the heavy metal as well. But it's not uh, optimal for me for trading. Um, for me, it's uh, trance music, house music, rhythmic beats. I like electronic a lot because uh, you know it has the repeated harmonies, melodies. And in my opinion, your brain works off of uh, dopamine, serotonin, cytidol, glutamine, cortisol, and adrenaline. And in order to see the market as objectively as possible, even when you're in a position, it has been my experience that when you are in a position, um, your adrenaline rises, uh, your cortisol rises, and so you uh, will lose an amount of objectiveness that is required to analyze the price in both directions, including contra your your existing position. And so, even when you are con you know you are watching the market move contrary to your position, you must remain objective in order to manage your risk and in order to optimize your trading. And so you have to lower your cortisol and you have to lower your uh, adrenaline. And the manner in which you that I have found to do that, I don't know if this works for you or not, but I will tell you the way that I do that. Number one is uh, to stay hydrated. Number two, uh, I will listen to electronic music, relaxing, like not like loud banging. I hate loud banging a lot. It really disturbs me. Uh, really perturbs me a great deal. Screaming children, ugh, very disturbing to me. And so rehydration, um, 
electronic music dollar cost averaging into a position so you're not seeing the numbers fluctuate too much in the end ladies and gentlemen I would like to say that it is my current experience that the you should treat the numbers that in my opinion the this is just pure mathematics uh, and the dollars and the numbers are really um, you it should be separated from reality it, it's just mathematics in my opinion that's all that's happening here and um, in order to stay objective even when the market is moving contrary to your position here are the here are the techniques that I use rehydration electronic music cold showers and meditation and prayer prayer has been scientifically proven to lower your cortisol and to, to access the contemplative part of your mind. There are studies on that. I'm also a believer in the Lord. So I am myself religious. I don't believe it's possible without him. But, you, you know, make up your own mind. Lord knows I could never be a preacher. I'm not called to be a preacher. Uh, I'm not. Uh, most people bother me too much. They're too loud. Um, so, cold showers, meditation, breathing exercises. Right in through the nose, out through the mouth. Prayer, meditation, cold showers, rehydration, uh, breaks from the screen going to walk to get some uh, blood circulation, right? Going for a walk, going for a run, whatever. So go for a quick walk. I walk miles a day. So walk, come back. Why, why would you do that? You're purposely trying to bring your brain waves back from an agitated state and bring them back to, I think, beta waves is the proper term for that, but I'm not sure. To lower your adrenaline and to lower your cortisol and you're trying to do that in an intentional and non-happenstance way. And so those are some of the techniques that I have found that are effective to lower cortisol, lower adrenaline for the purpose of staying objective with the price. Um, I just wanted to get out some quick thoughts on that. Um, I love making videos. I, I find it therapeutic to talk through the price. Uh, talk through what I'm seeing on the chart. I do find that to be therapeutic, and so I'm going to continue doing it. Um, unfortunately, most of you are quite irrational and quite illogical, and uh, therefore you bother me a great deal. And so uh, whether I can live stream with a live chat box, um, with the way that I am, uh, most of you are going to irritate me too much and agitate me too much. So it is likely going to stay to be video recordings. Um, maybe I will do a live stream with the chat box disabled. Um, so there is that. Um, I don't want y'all thinking that like I'm a cripple or anything like that. No, I'm a very high functioning guy, but I can't deny what I am. So I think that a lot of law firms in not looking at my application, uh, they're really missing out on hiring me. I think that having a research machine and having someone who can reach deep, deeper levels of focus than virtually anyone, uh, going for the louder and the better, I, I think that I could be a very valuable tool for your law firm. Actually, I know that I can, but you have to use me as a tool correctly. Um, the clients are gonna bother me a lot their emotions, their irrationality is going to bother me endlessly. But I think that I could have been a million dollar asset to your law firm in terms of research, writing, that sort of thing. But you didn't use me correctly. Uh, and too many of you are too short-sighted to use me as a valuable tool, a money-making tool. You, were, you didn't see far enough 
you didn't you didn't get past the planning stage of you know how do we use this guy you know he might not be client intake but his ability to research and his ability to find the nuance and to delineate between very small differences and things uh, you didn't you didn't want to take advantage of that uh, and I think that's a real you were really missing out on a multi-million dollar asset I really do believe that I could have provided your law firm uh, a multi-million dollar tool but you were too focused on the client intake stuff and there are other attorneys that are good at that but it's not me it's not my natural inclination um, the clients are too chaotic for me they're too emotional that's just how it is so I think that in not looking at my resume uh, I think you really missed out a lot uh, a great deal because uh, you didn't strategically think about how I as a tool could be used to generate briefs to generate memoranda to, gem to generate a deep and nuanced understanding of case law I think you missed out a lot I think you were too short-sighted but that's my opinion on that I hold no grudges against anyone I understand that the law is a business and most of it is client intake uh, I get that so I think you missed out but I'm gonna leave it at that we're gonna keep working on this guys uh, we're gonna you know with that being said uh, I am NOT a shock jock I am NOT Howard Stern um, I don't like screaming and I don't like irrationality and I don't like illogic um, my other calling in life could have been computer science pretty easily. So, I think that's a little bit, uh, that's enough for right now. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, I'm not going to be like other YouTubers, guys. If you're watching this, uh, it's not me. You're Sometimes, you know, you're going to be bothered or you're going to click off the video because you're going to hear me just randomly speak German or randomly speak Russian or even Spanish or maybe French that's just how I am it's therapeutic to me so with that being said uh, all of our disclaimers should be out there uh, I'm not a licensed financial advisor this is not financial advice trading involves substantial risk of loss including more than you initially invest uh, required uh, required legal disclaimer uh, I'm a licensed attorney uh, I, this is not a legal solicitation. Uh, I'm not interested in being your attorney. Uh, this is not an advertisement for legal services uh, in any manner, shape, or form. Uh, and so that is out there. Uh, and with that, I'm going to leave you. Uh, I will be back if the market starts moving. If I start to see something, uh, I'll probably start up another recording. So we will see. We're on the NASDAQ. We're trading Top Step Trader. I am partnered with them. They've treated me very well. So we're going to stick uh, with Top Step. Uh, we're going to have a single-minded focus here on the NASDAQ, a little bit of intermarket relationships with the dollar index to keep a little bit of a broader picture. Uh, we're going to be employing the, math, the models derived from uh, Michael Huddleston, otherwise known as uh, Inner Circle Trader. It's an online personality. Uh, those are from whom I take the models. So you can go learn more about those models from him. Uh, and with that, I will be up with more video recordings later. Uh, Tschüss, ciao, and das vidanya, друзья. Всего хорошего.